influencing our society through the principles of Christ. If there's anything we do here that you don't understand, please speak to any of our counselors after service. They'll be happy to explain everything to you based on God's word. The counselors sit at this part of the auditorium, so please do make your way there and speak to any one of them. They'll be happy to help you. Amen. Please take note of the following announcements. Today, it's a day set aside to commemorate the Central Aid Day. And as we usually do, the second offering would solely be dedicated to this cause and will be given for that purpose. And as it was announced last Sunday, I believe that we came prepared to give a special offering to support this worthy cause. Amen. Youth Camp Meeting 2017. The youth began their camp meeting last Wednesday. They are returning today, and so we would like to advise parents to please wait patiently after service and pick your words home. Amen. Spiritual Emphasis Program. Beginning Tuesday evening, that is the 29th of September, through to Friday, the 1st of September, we would have our Spiritual Emphasis Program right here at the Holy Ghost Temple. Each evening, we kick off at 6.30 p.m. And ministering is our own father, Prophet Christopher Yawano and Reverend Eastwood Anaba. I believe that you have been praying for the program, so look forward to great and mighty things being done here through the power of God right here in our days. Amen. Because of the spiritual emphasis program, which is continuing from Tuesday to Friday, we would not have our usual Saturday morning prayer service, which is on a monthly basis. So please take note. Saturday morning, we will not be here as we usually do every beginning of month. First fruits. We will take our first fruit for the month of August during next Sunday's service. If you need an envelope, please do signal to the ushers. They will hand you one. And I would like to remind you that all checks should be written to ICGC Holy Ghost Temple. And do ensure that the amount in words correspond with the amounts and figures. And your signature also is the one known by your bankers. So please do take note. Men's ministry calling. There would be a capacity building seminar today after service on financial planning and investment. Please, the men invite everyone in this church to join them after service for this special seminar. The Inception Workshop. The young adults who have just graduated from the youth ministry are having a special program called the Inception Workshop. It's taking place on Saturday, 2nd of September at 2 p.m. prompt venue, the Junior Youth Hall. So all those of you who graduated should be there, and they invite as many as can also join them to come over and participate in the seminar. A new membership class will begin on Sunday, the 3rd of September in room B3. If you are in this church and not yet a member and would like to be a member, please sign up and attend the membership class. Amen. Funeral announcement. The senior pastor and leadership of the church wish to announce the home calling of Stella Mausi Akos Anyomi, who was a member of this church with the prisons ministry and also of the Hacho Covenant family. Details of the funeral arrangements are on the notice board, but please do take note that the burial service will be on Saturday, the 9th of September at YP Church Amejofe Avatime at 9 a.m. prompt. Please visit the notice board for further details. I would like to encourage members of the church to visit the bereaved family and also support them as well as encourage them. Amen. Wedding announcement. Be reminded of the following weddings planned for the next couple of weeks. The wedding between Prosper Lechu and Rebecca Mensah will take place on Saturday, the 2nd of September, 2017, at the Holy Ghost Temple at 12 noon prompt. The wedding between Isaac Jabate Nate and Pamela Edem Danku will also take place on Saturday, 9th September, 2017, here at the Holy Ghost Temple at 10 a.m. prompt. The wedding between Emmanuel Ousu and Lydia Nutifafa Gamo will take place on Saturday, 9th September 2017 at 12 noon prompt 
here at the Holy Ghost Temple. And the wedding between Fagil Abbey and Eugenia Enos will take place on Saturday, 9th of September 2017 at the Calvary Baptist Church Adenta at 11 a.m. prompt. People of God, if there be any reason why any of the pairs that have been introduced to you should not be lawfully joined together in holy matrimony, then let the senior pastor and the leadership of the church know. If not, when it does happen, kindly hold your peace. Amen. 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 Okay, there is one more announcement before the choir minister, and I would like to invite the first lady of this church, Reverend Felicia Anno, to make that announcement. Please receive her with a special, 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 special applause. You see, I'm going to ask Mami to go and sit down because you, you, are not, you are not receiving her the way we should receive our own first lady. Now, now, now listen, listen, listen to me. This special mama is our first lady. And please receive her. You see, she doesn't like it. But please receive her with her mighty clap offering. Praise the Lord. Kindly take your seat. Thank you so much. Praise the Lord. This is a very short information for you. Um, we celebrated our 20th anniversary when? 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 February when? February 2016. I just want to find out if you remember we've celebrated any anniversary at all. Amen. How many of you were not here? It means everybody was here. So we were able to partake of whatever went on in 2016. And as we said during the anniversary, there is always the beginning of something. And history is very important. You know your grandmother's name, don't you? Maybe you didn't meet her, but you heard the name. Amen. Who told you? Somebody said it, and you remember. So when you hear somebody being called a name that is your grandmother's name, you say, oh, that was my grandmother's name. Amen. Now, in the scriptures, there were some things God said to the people, and he said, write it down as a memorial so that your children and your children's children would come to learn of my works. Amen. If you don't write it as a memorial, the next generation that comes may not even remember the good things that God had done. And during the anniversary, there were some interviews, there were some documentations we watched here and so on. And I'm sure a lot of you have forgotten even what you saw on the screen. So we got a group of people called the editorial team who said, we don't want the people to forget about all that has gone on in the 20 years of the life of Holy Ghost Temple. So let's take time and document some of you were here right from the very first day. Some people joined the second year. Some joined the third up until the 20th year. Some of you came two months to 20 years. But you are still members of Holy Ghost Temple. Am I right? But a lot of things have happened that you don't know how it happened. And I tell you, sometimes when you hear of somebody's story, it gives you hope that yours is on the way. Praise the Lord. I don't know how many of you one day will be called into ministry and then you trace it to what God has done in Holy Ghost Temple and you have faith that if God did it for them or Holy Ghost Temple, he will do it for me. Today we make reference to Esther. We make reference to Abraham. We make reference to Ruth and many of them in the scriptures because we read about them and we have taken time to document things for your keeps. Amen. Amen. I don't know why they like to put our picture in front, but pardon us for that. 
next time, don't put our picture. This is the second picture I'm seeing. Amen. Praise the Lord. This is the anniversary, the 20th anniversary edition of Imprints. As I said, we need to have a copy for memorial. If your grandchildren come, they say, ah, how did this thing all start? Then you go and pull this document and say, this is the story. I wasn't even there, but I heard about it. And I'm a witness to what God has done in that church. How many of you will not buy a copy? Oh, show by hands. How many will buy a copy? In fact, we took every one of you into consideration. When we we're going to the printer, we said, we don't want the situation where somebody would come and not get a copy. So let's take the records of the people who come to church. So we took all of you into consideration. Because I don't want the situation where somebody would come to me and say, Mrs. I know I didn't get a copy. So I made sure we took all of you into consideration and added excess if you want to give to your friends. <laughs> Amen. You know, when you go to funeral and they are sharing things you, like this, you are scrambling, oh, I didn't get a copy. Can you give me one? Because it's free. This one is not free. Amen. This one has been made for a purpose. So make sure you get a copy. How much is it? How much is it? Editorial team. It is only 15 Ghana CDs. Credit. How much credit would I buy? And how many years would you use that uh, credit for? 15 CDs for your generation and generations after you. I beseech you by the mercies of God that at the end of the service, you will go out there, there will be people with various copies. Make sure you get one for yourself and one for your friend. God bless you. Or put your hands together for Jesus. Okay, it's time for us to present our offering. And uh, please, don't let your offering suffer because you're going to buy this. Uh, you, you came with your offering. Let your offering, you know, come as your purpose. Amen. But, you know, as you give your offering, God certainly will bless you and uh, will remember your offering today. Please receive the choir as they minister whilst we present our offering.
Yeah. Let's, let's appreciate the choir one more time. Thank you very much. Amen. Indeed, we know the one in whom we believed. If you face storms, and if you face trials, and if you face difficulties, he's a dependable God. We can depend on him. We can run to him because he is a refuge. He is a shield. He's a buckler. He's all in all, and he will always be there for you. Amen. This morning, this great God who does not change is ready to bring his word to you. And I am sure your heart is ready to receive God's word. Please help me welcome the servant of God, Prophet Christopher Yawanok. This morning. Father, we thank you for today and for giving us today. We thank you for the grace of life. We thank you for this opportunity to give to you. You said giving, there's blessing, more blessing in giving than receiving. So you're giving us the opportunity to be blessed more. We say we thank you, but bless you. May you keep us. May you preserve us. May you help us. Lord, may our offering be acceptable unto you. And may we receive the fruit from the seed that we have sown. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. amen. Hallelujah. You're welcome once again to church. And God bless you for coming. Uh, in consultation, you know, Mrs. Arnold showed you some nice uh, magazine. And I pray that each one, everybody can get one and buy one for the other. The price is actually 15,000, uh, 15 CDs. <laughs> if you want to pay for 15,000, that's okay. It's 15 CDs. I just want to see, I want to hear whether you listen to me well. And I now know that you listen. Amen. So once you've listened, I'll tell you the re So it's 15 Ghana cities. That's what it costs. But the church will take five Ghana cities for you. Then you can buy it at 10. <laughs> so if you're buying it, take the 5,000, five Ghana cities. Why am I talking about 1,000, 1,000, 1,000? That's good. God is going to make you thousands. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Take the five Ghana cities and that's a bonus from the church to you. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So we've taken one third of the cost. So, oh, is my mask okay? Good. So, rush until or else we'll get finished. Praise God. Ah, it's good to serve the Lord. Jesus, in Luke chapter 22, from verse 33 and 32, he prayed a prayer. Hmm. 
Luke 22. I think let me read from 30. That you may eat and drink of my table in my kingdom and sit on the throne judging the 12 tribe of Israel. Verse 31. And he said, and the Lord said, Simon, Simon, or Simon, Simon, depending on where you come from. Amen. He Mention Simon name twice. Simon. Simon. That's the same Bible. Indeed, Satan has asked for you. You see how bold Satan is? <laughs> He's a prophet. Why? Yet Satan has what? Why is he asking for Simon? So that he can give him gift. Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. But I love this. But what? But what? I have prayed for you. What kind of prayer did you pray for Simon that your faith should not fail and when you have returned to me, strengthen your brothers? Jesus said, Simon, Simon, Satan, He's asking <laughs> that I should give him permission so that he can take you, destroy you, sift you like wheat. Satan is wicked, though. He will make you say you're scatty. Everything will be destroyed in your life. You will flow in the air without knowing where you're going, you'll get lost from the system. Satan is always asking. He said, why? Because Satan knows what God is going to use Simon for. But Jesus put something. Even though Satan have asked, he put the word, but... I have what? Say pray for you. Say pray for you. The prayer he prayed was not to cast away Satan. The prayer he prayed was not to stop Satan from not coming. There are some situations whether you will avoid it or not, you will meet it. Don't let anybody deceive you that when you receive Jesus Christ, highway, no traffic, you will meet any car, and no car will be in front of you. It's a lie. If you like, try Tema motorway and see. If you become a Christian, you become Satan's number one target. But how do we overcome? Jesus said, Satan is asking for your business, for your life, for your marriage, for your children, for your health, and for 
whatever you're doing for your church and for whatever you're doing. He said, but I have prayed for you. He had prayed for you so that Satan will not, it's not that, oh, don't, ask, don't Jesus have the power to stop Satan from coming? Yes, he has. Don't he have the power so that Peter will not go through? Yes, he has the power. But I said, the prayer, God, I'm praying for you is that your faith, your faith will what? See, anytime somebody's faith fails, you are gone. The only way Satan cannot get you, situation cannot put you down, is when your faith is still standing. No matter how you are battered by storms, what is important is your faith. All that the devil is coming to doing against your will do against your life is to weaken your faith. The reason why he makes you sick so that your faith will be weakened. Once your faith is weak and you lose faith, then you say you can die. But once your faith is still strong, he knows he cannot take your life. The Bible says that in John. That you have overcome. Let me read John 5, verse 1, talking about those, and to verse 4, talking about the believers, those who are born of God. He said, after the first John, first John, first John. Whoever, whoever believes that Jesus is a Christ is born of who? So I'm talking about the believer. Do you believe that Jesus is born? Uh, he's a Christ? How many of you believe that Jesus is the Christ? Great. And everyone who loves him, who begot, also loves him, who is begotten of him. Verse 2. By this we know that we love the children of God. When we, we love God and keep his commandment. Three. For this is the love that God this is the love of God that we keep his commandment and his commandments are not burdensome. God's commandments are not burdensome at all. Verse 4. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. When you are born of God, your DNA is a potential well overcomer. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody born, the new birth comes with overcoming power. The day you got born again, you are overcomer. But you don't just, somebody say, ah, you say I'm overcomer, but look at how I'm falling left and right. Yes. I only say that you can have a lion. How many of you have seen a lion before? At least you've seen a picture, it in a picture, very bold and always trying to catch, chasing some animals that are bigger than it, but it will still chase it and, 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 and catch it. Most animals in the, in the jungle fear, even those in the house, when we see it, we all run away. But a baby lion, born today, the DNA in it is that it can catch a ship. But at that moment, it cannot. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. A big, a ship can even, or a goat, 
can even bully that cup. Isn't it? Can bully it, use it head and try to, if the mother doesn't come, they can kill it. Even though he's a lion, even though he's the king of the jungle, but some animal can beat it at a certain stage. But when it grows to its potential, let that same goat see it. It becomes a meat. That is why believers are supposed to grow. The moment you are born again, it is in you. You are overcome. The one that is born of God overcomes the world. Let me finish. I haven't finished that scripture. And this is the victory that has overcome the world. What is that victory? Our faith. No wonder Jesus prayed that our faith should not fail. Once your faith fail, you have failed in the world. <laughs> if your faith remains, no matter what is happening to you, I know at the end you will become victorious. I hope you're getting me. Abraham, the fathers of faith, those that have been listed of faith, they started at a point. At a point, it looked like they were failures. At a point, you look at Sarah and you lose hope. But their faith kept on them. At a point, you look at Abraham and he said, at this age, what can happen to my life? But the Bible said in Romans that he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but strong in faith. Therefore, it might not be Okay, let me read from verse 7 so that all, uh, 16 so that you all understand. Therefore, it might not be of. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be according to, the, according to grace, so that the promise might be sure to all seed. Not only uh, to all the seed, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are what? Of the faith of Abraham. Who is the father of us all? Then verse 17. As it is written, I have made you what? A father of many nations. In the presence of him whom he believed. God who gives life to the dead and call those things which do not exist as though they did. That is the basis of our faith. Every faith must have its base. The reason why you believe. <laughs> you don't just believe in, uh, uh, in vacuum. You believe somebody because he can do something. It's not that everybody who comes to you said, oh, uh, uh, and you are in trouble, and maybe you need some listen, you are in trouble, they are trying to, uh, you, you, you went for a loan, and you couldn't pay the loan, and tomorrow you are going to auction your, uh, your, your, your house, which you put uh, you, as a collateral, you don't have place to go, then you are crying, you went everywhere, and uh, then somebody just came with charity and said, I'm well, don't worry, I'll pay it for you. Will you be able to believe it? Somebody you've been feeding. Even yesterday, he came to you for food. They said, oh, don't worry, I will. tomorrow I'll pay. How many of you believe that? But in case one of these rich men comes around and bumps into you and tells you, how 
much. So it took a hundred thousand dollars. So I'm a billionaire worth over 45, 50 billion. Don't worry. Just don't worry. Go and sleep. Call it done. I will pay it. I'm going to issue then he issue maybe a check. Paper. And he wrote some figures. Paper and ink. And a signature. You might have the same checkbook from the same bank. <laughs> but the, <laughs> and your signature may be, you know, some of you, you, you see, when you were learning your signature, some people, when they write their signature, very beautiful, like Pastor Charles' signature. <laughs> but it's not the beauty of the signature. <laughs> it is what is in the account. That matters. God has what it is in the account for you to believe it for. Once he signs it and gives it to you, it's just a promise note, isn't it? That you take it and you see some people that will jump and they'll be screaming. Meanwhile, you haven't seen the money. You might be in the same bank with the same, uh, how do you call it? Check. check. Why is that your check couldn't do the thing? <laughs> it didn't have the back end. Yeah. Yeah. But Jesus had the back end. Yeah. Some names don't have back ends. So when you mention, the account won't open. <laughs> when you mention, <laughs> you go red. When you hit it, nothing happened. But there are some accounts when you hit it. And Jesus' account is grace, so you can draw faith out of his account. I hope you're getting me. So Abraham did not just believe God, not just because somebody just promised that I'll give you a child, but there is a certain account which God has that he's able to raise, give life to the dead. No wonder, no wonder Abraham believed when God said, go and sacrifice Isaac. He had that basis that, look, God gives life to the dead. So he said, I shall kill my son. Even if I kill him, he's able to give life to that dead child. Abraham. Oh, let me finish. 220. Who, contrary to hope, you know, sometimes hope is against you. So now people think faith is when you are praying and a thing is becoming better and better. No. When you are praying and you see the reverse, yeah. that, that is when faith is needed. Contrary to what? Hope. Sometimes all your hope is gone and the storm against it is pushing you. Against hope. In hope, he believes. He said, look, if there's no hope, I will create one. Create one because God can do it. Amen. This situation is hopeless. But in God, I will create hope. So that he became the father of many nations, according to what was spoken, so shall your descendant be. This is just a word from God. Abraham, your descendant will be like this. And Abraham, he didn't change Abraham's uh, condition. He still felt like Abraham. When God's word comes, sometimes you'll feel the same. Abraham's strength was the same. You go to the house, God say, oh, I'll make you a millionaire. You go to the house, the same house, the same shoe, the same shirt, the same job. Say, ah, oh, God, what are you talking about? <laughs> Believe him. 
Because he said it. Not because you can make it, but because he said it. I'm not being weak. This is where I'm coming. I'm not being what? Weak in faith. Jesus said, Peter, I pray for you so that you will not fail. You mean your faith will not fail. It's not even you, Peter, I'm concerned, but your faith. It's not you, Abraham, that I'm concerned. It's whether your faith will be weak. Most people faith, whenever the devil comes to attack you here and there, the purpose, number one purpose, is to weaken your faith. If you're fighting with somebody, you must know his strong point. And once you're able to weaken where he's strong, the rest, you know, it's easy. you'll be able to overcome the person. So when it comes, the first thing he attacks is your faith. He will attack your salvation, faith in your salvation. Did I really receive Jesus? How many of you have wondered, yeah, am I really born again? Yes, he's attacking your faith. If I was born, if I'm born again, why am I still uh, 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 doing all this kind of, <laughs> of things? Uh, um, so you've received Christ more than three times, four times. The, it, it will not help even if you're receiving 100 times. It is when you strengthen your faith. Once the Bible says that, if you believe in your heart that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead and you confess with your mouth that he's Lord, you are saved. Whether you feel it or you don't feel it, you are saved. Sometimes you don't feel like you are saved. Faith is different from feeling. Hmm? Feeling is it happened when something happened around you. If something touches your body, is a voice or the flesh? The voice or the flesh is feeling. So it's part of the senses. The voice of the soul is reasoning. <laughs> Am I born again? Am I saved? But the voice of the spirit is revelation. Revelation comes. And when it comes, it does not matter what is happening around you. You can still believe that God is and the rewarder of them that diligently seek. I have prayed for you so that your faith will not fail. If there's any time we need to strengthen our faith, this are the time. The end time we need to strengthen our faith because the devil will attack your faith in different ways he will use conditions in this world to weaken faith he will use even the media to weaken faith so that it is difficult for people to profess their faith openly He will use many things. Sometimes he could even use men of God to weaken your faith. You see something happen to one man of God. Say, hey, this thing, uh, is it, why, if God is there, why should this thing happen? It all an attack to weaken the faith of the believer. But if you put our faith grounded in God, that is where the root of our faith should be. The root of our faith shouldn't be in a man. Because men, even Peter himself, Peter, the rock, the rock himself, Satan was looking to shift him. And at a point, he shifted. Imagine when he shifted, you know, he also, he bustled us more. He said, I'll go out fishing. And the rest said, oh, let's follow him. 
And when he went back, he did his fisherman thing. He said, what I couldn't do for many years, now I have freedom to do. And he was doing that. Jesus appeared. You know, Jesus appeared. When Jesus appeared, he saw Jesus, he jumped into the water. <laughs> he realized on Jesus. But he is all around. When your faith is weak, you think Jesus is too far. So you can do anything. But if your faith is strong, you know God is all around you. Has Peter forgotten that God is everywhere? Or because Jesus is not there in person, he thinks God to his eyes is closed. When you're weak, your faith is weak, you just see the human aspect. But when your faith is strong, you go beyond the human aspect. You don't need a pastor to come before you live right. Hey, pastor is coming. You know, God has been pastor to his fighting for his salvation. Everybody is fighting for his salvation. Nobody is a policeman for anybody. We are all accountable to one God. And we are all strengthening our faith. From faith to faith. If there's anything we should build, it should be our faith in God. If you have that and you don't have money, you are gone. Are you getting it? He did not come to attack Peter's boat. Even though he knows that Peter will go back to his boat. But the way Peter will go back to his boat is when his faith is weakened. So, brethren, Satan is in the business. And the business is when he comes, he attacks your faith. So, the scripture says, this is one of the only battles the Bible encourages us to fight. Fight the good fight of faith. So, faith is a battle. Somebody is trying to take it out, away from you. Satan is trying to point and destroy you. But your faith must stand. You must fight until you win. Fight the world. The good fight. Fight the good fight of faith. The first thing you need is to fight the good fight of faith. Lay on eternal life to which you were also called. And have confessed to confess the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Most of us faith are wobbling. I pray that your faith will stand. Amen. If anything come unto you, what to bring deliverance is your faith. If we read through Hebrews 11. Faith, they're doing faith, and the one that is able to make people even stand and die for their life because of faith. They say, we are not going to bow. The devil tried to attack the faith of the Hebrew boys. And how did he do it? He put up an image that everybody should bow. The faith is not being attacked. God has told them, bow not to any image. What? Do not bow to what? Any graven image. Image made by man. But they made the image and said, this is God. Everybody should bow. And they said, oh, have for me, have for me. I, I, I won't bow to image. Yes? Sometimes, do you know that idolatry is not only a stone that you bow to. Stubbornness. The negative stubbornness. According to someone, 
says that it's like idolatry. Because you're full of yourself. When God tells you move here, you will move. You have another God that yourself. That is yourself. Very, very stubborn. The Bible says, like somebody who is going to bow before an image. So that's why you don't have to be with, I don't like judging quickly. If you're fast to judge, you know sometimes you can see people's sin and you don't see your sin. The first person you must judge is yourself. Do a self-assessment. Judge yourself. If you judge yourself, nobody will judge you. All of us are servants of God. I don't know where you are coming from. I don't know the struggle you came with to this, the body of Christ. I don't know how you are struggling out of a situation. Somebody struggling out of a situation is somebody's beginning. Hey, somebody from his childhood, he's a liar. His father taught him how to lie. Mother taught him how to lie. Sister taught him how to lie. The school taught him how to lie. Everybody taught him how to lie. So he thinks lie is a normal life. So he's a liar. And he himself, I don't say anything. Then he starts. He becomes born again. Like Jacob. He carried his tricks small. Even though he's born again, the thing is still hanging on him. So he goes out. He didn't have any, nobody trained him. There's some people, they are not cultured, they are not trained. They don't have any manner, not because they didn't have what they don't want to, but they didn't have anybody to teach them. They live like wild people in the, in, in the world. Then they get born again. So they are now trying to. Uh, uh, the spirit is okay, but the body system is, uh, <laughs> is trying to adjust. That level, somebody might even be an unbeliever, but because he's been trained to discipline some kind of his body, he may look even better than the, the believer. And if you don't take time, you will judge and say, the unbeliever is better than the believer. But you don't know. There is transformation inside. The inside is changed. And the inside that is changed is coming gradually changing the outward man. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Aren't you get, are you getting me? Yeah. If you wait for 10 years as the person mature, you'll find out that this one is not living a life because they told him, do this, do this. He's living it with conviction. One is living it because he thinks it's good for society. But one, is li one will not take a bribe because he thinks that, oh, it's not good for society to do uh, when I am caught, uh, 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 I'll be disgraced. But one knows that, look, my nature is not taking bribe. So when you push these two people, the other one will sin. This one, the one who had the change from inside, will stand out. What we need is a change from inside. But sometimes the change from inside, it takes a very long time to see it happen in the physicalism. Isn't it? How many of you have got, you know, sometimes you put something at a, one place. When you change that thing and put it in another place. It will take some time for you to realize every morning when you go, the first thing, if it's a toothbrush, the first place you go is where you put your toothbrush. You want to take it out, but you've changed it. If you like, go and change it and see where you put yours. 
you'll find that you'll be missing it for some time until you get used to the new place. It doesn't mean that you are stupid. It doesn't mean that you are forgetful. The body has adjusted that this is where it is. So the moment you go, things are done automatically. You go there, your hand go there first. And then you realize that it's not there. So, brethren, our faith is very important. Believers' faith should be protected, should be kept. We should feed our spirit with faith. Because when the devil, for you to be overcome by the devil, to be destroyed by the devil, it is your faith he must get first. If he has no, he can't touch your faith, he can't touch anything. What he did to Job was to destroy his faith. To destroy his faith, he said that the reason was that Job will curse God. How can somebody curse God unless you lose faith in that God? But when Job's faith was very strong, one day, some of you don't understand what happened to Job. One day, this one is coming. You are a rich man. You have everything. You have, you have children. You have family. You have everything. And everybody respects you in that land. And one day, you have, you have investment, every area investment in, 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 in Asia, investment in America, investment in Europe, every other area. You have investment everywhere. And you know, this investment, look, ha, 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 if I lie down, and even throughout my life, my great-grandchildren, even they will all come and, even if I don't wake again, they will enjoy it. One day, all what man will put his hope on. The first thing that came, the person was... Re- Tell him this has happened. By the time he finished, another one has come. By the time he finished, and you know, it's a story as if the, the devil, <laughs> the devil planning. Why don't they all come at once and tell so that he can cry one cry? But <laughs> <laughs> no, no, let all of them, all of them match and just come together and say, hey, master, something has happened. Oh, this one has happened. Then they say, what's this? All of them, they all don't say, then if you want to cry, you just put all together and cry. But you wait in an emotional torture just to break your faith. This one will come and he's saying it. After he's finished saying it, you see the next one coming. By the time he finished, he's lost everything. Job became zero, bankrupt. Maybe he lost his house. And now, not only that, his body also got affected. So he can't even get the money to go to hospital. So at the time you have money, you don't get sick. But when the money is not there, that is where the sickness knock. Ha, the devil <laughs> comes to hit. And Job said, I don't know where it came from. I don't know who brought it. But me, I can tell you, I know who brought it. Job even thought it was God. He said, even if he slays me, yet will I have faith in him. Yet will I trust him. Yet my faith will not be destroyed. Yet my faith will be strong because that is the thing that linked myself and my God. Let me go through all those things. I, for my faith, I will not relinquish it. I will not leave it. I will still hold on to that faith. When our faith is strong, you don't get offended at little things. People think that they come to church for somebody. No. If you go to church because of somebody, then you haven't known God. You come to church because you are part of the body. 
So don't allow anybody to, to make you, oh, this is, oh, the way, listen, this is how, you are crying, sorry, you. Oh, I'm crying, sorry, you know, when you play, uh, how do you call it? The one that Ajimata. The Ajimata, who they know it all, <laughs> those things. I will mention. Golf. We, we play Chaskele. <laughs> Chaskele. I don't know whether they came to steal it from us. <laughs> it would have played some before. <laughs> but not on a grass. <laughs> but they still golf. If you play golf and you have some dislocation some, or something happens to you, you don't stop, isn't it? They say, oh, no, 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 no. Or somebody tried to then, somebody do another, he stepped on your toe or hit you somewhere. He said, because of this, me, I won't play golf again. No! Or when you're playing football, you know football, when you're playing football, then somebody kick you. He said, I've stopped, I won't play again. No! Sometimes they kick you, you fall down. Sometimes the referee will not even say, eh, it's a foul. Look, if you're angry, they will score you. Huh? Get up. You're falling. When you, if you want to fight that, they will disqualify you and give you a red card. So, you focus. Your focus is the ball. The reason why the person kick you, know that because you are very good. People don't kick people who are, not, who are bad. If you don't play, nobody mind you. But if you're a good player, that's the reason why they tackle you and mark you. So anytime everybody is tackling you, holding you here, know that, look, wow, I'm a good player. That is why. Sometimes you yourself don't know you're a good player. <laughs> but the people know this guy is a dangerous man. <laughs> I hope you're getting me. Yes. Hold on to your faith. No matter what is happening, Job said, even God, if you slay me, if you kill me, I will still hold on and trust you. Where, who am I to trust again? Even though it wasn't God slaying him, God permitted him. You know, Satan went to Jesus too and asked for Peter. Huh? The same way, Satan also went to God and asked for Job. Oh. Huh? The reason is that he want to destroy their faith. But all of that, he said, what I have to do is, Peter, this one, I can't take you out of it. I will give you faith to overcome it. Amen. Because what you can use to overcome it is faith. There are certain things nobody can take you out of it. Too. It is your faith that will take you out. Amen. What we men of God can do is to pray for you that your faith will stand. That's why God lined up all the heroes of faith, all of them waiting for you, all this cloud of witnesses waiting for you, clapping for you. So when you are getting weak, I say, uh, Job, uh, uh, Job will tell you, hey, my God, I went through serious thing more than yours. You, it's just one house you lost and you are crying. Oh, move ahead. Then you go, you start moving ahead. That's why we read the Bible to encourage ourselves Encourage ourselves. When you're going through something, go to the Bible. Somebody have gone through it. Where is than that? Then you get to, somebody say, oh, bow. If you don't bow, you, you, I will suck you. Yes, if you don't bow, and say, say, maybe your boss. He said, uh, I want to befriend you before you get the promotion. It's another bowing. Tell him, if I don't deserve it, I don't deserve it. If I deserve it, I don't need to do something for you personally for you to give it to me. Hold on to that. If he doesn't promote you, let him leave you down there. One day he'll be taken out and they will put you there straight. Yeah. But will you have faith to stand until that day? 
Will you be able to stand? Satan seeking the faith of many to destroy. Faith of children pumping in spiritual demonic forces to destroy the mind of people concerning God. When you talk about religion because of what people have done here and there, they, they don't pick God from the Bible. They pick God from the imperfect man. They define God from the imperfect man. Not even for the, those who have perfected this level, but those who are, who are now starting. Oh, all Christians are lies. Ah, you know, people say that. Maybe the person have a base. Three Christians have lied to him. So he jumped into conclusion that all Christians are lies. Are liars. But have you interviewed all Christians? Have you dealt with all Christians? There's no love. I don't know your definition of love. When something happened to me, nobody came. So I've stopped church. If you go to church because you want people to come to your programs, your birthday party, and eat for you. <laughs> it's very easy to go. You can go outside and when you want people to come and eat, they will come. Just trump it. There are people who are getting hungry. Just tell them. When Jesus, there was a parable Jesus gave, he invited some people. They didn't come. So he said, go to the bio, go to this and bring those who are hungry and come and eat. They might not be very hungry. That's why they didn't come. Oh! <laughs> My mother died. My father died. I only saw the big church. I only saw the, 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 the oh, pastor. You see, I only saw Arma. There was some, when my mother died, I was going to bury. I met somebody. He said, Pastor, my mother is dead. And the person was crying. Said that person, who last year? Can I have a meeting? Oh, she's here. And I expected, some people I expected to come to the funeral. They didn't come. I told them, oh, Pastor, only about 30. Look at this big church. I almost told him, hey, I took less than 20 people to my mother's to go and bury my mother. Me, who is a pastor over? A big church. When we buried, didn't she go? <laughs> After all, if I take all of you there, Will you carry her? No. no. I will still pay for those who are going to carry. So, so what else? <laughs> Say prophet. I said, I didn't tell anybody. You know I didn't tell you. Yeah. By the time your head have gone to bury and come. I know some of you, I know you got hurt. Your faith should stand. <laughs> Don't let your faith shake. I know some of you got hurt. It's good. Don't be hurt. You want to do me good. And I say the goodness, keep it. For that. <laughs> so is there any offense? I haven't offended anybody. 
You can be offended if I didn't come. I want to show you that what is important is yourself and your God. It's good for friends to console other people. But don't demand it. It's not a right. He said, Prophet, yeah. That's the reason why I came home. <laughs> the reason why you came to the church is because of Jesus. Yeah. Your faith shall stand. In these last days, it's good for us to do uh, uh, social work to help people which we do a lot and which today, the second uh, offering we're going to take it for uh, the told you, yes. central aid, which you should give. Anything you want to give to me, to help me, give it. We need to want to help people if it's not because of this church, some wouldn't have gone to school. Hundreds of people, thousands of people have been helped. And I think that is faith in action. Let your faith stand because the devil will be attacking your faith. Jesus said, Peter, even Peter who was with Jesus, at that time, he's asking for him. The you who don't see him physically. <laughs> Satan is asking for your life. But he has no power over you until your faith fails. There are so many things that some of us are going through. Don't give up. Hold on to faith. I'm also praying for you that your faith will not fail. Amen. Then Abraham, let me go back to my Romans before I, I, I get there. He said, Abraham staggered not at the promises of God. Sometimes you can stagger. Sometimes you say, hmm, Listen, this kind of faith we are believing, <laughs> let's think about it. This thing, is it not foolishness? No. This Bible crap that they are talking about, is it true? true? He will first attack the foundation of your faith, which is the, the word. And not being weak in faith. He did not consider his own body. Once you begin to consider some things, your faith begins to go down. Don't consider certain things when you are believing in faith. If you are believing in faith, God has promised you, I will make you this. Don't consider your background. Say, my background, nobody has gone to this level before. Yeah. Yes, that's why God has spoken. Oh God, you see, yay, me. Hmm. What you say we should do, can I do it? Yes. I don't have the physical strength. If God has said it, he will give you the physical strength to fulfill it. He did not stagger. He wasn't weak in faith. He was what? Honestly. Oh, let me see the word. He did not consider his own body already dead since he was about a hundred years old. Because life naturally as you grow at a certain point uh, the law of decay and this in setting you begin to uh, your strength at 90 is not the same as when you were 
35 or 27. The way you could jump if you try at 90. There are certain things you could do at 27, 22, 18. But at certain age, the natural law says this body is getting worn out. So he realized it, that this is the fact. But the truth is that God is the one that created that body. The truth is that he is able to bring life to the dead. The truth is that now the fact versus the truth. It's a fact that he was old. It's a fact that at 90 something years you can't, you can't do anything. It's a fact that at a point he was dead. You understand? His body was dead. It doesn't mean that they buried him. Eh? The body that produced a child, that can produce a child, was dead. You understand what I'm saying? You are adult, so you understand? <laughs> so nothing, even if we give him any medicine, it won't, it won't get up where it is. Then he, he himself knows that it, it, it has finished its way. <laughs> but he still believes that even if his body is dead, God brings life. He is able to bring life to me. Satan will tell you, hey, Abraham. This your, this, your, this your age, you think you can give birth. Look at your age. The ten, about 10 years ago, you stopped working. <laughs> ha. Is it now it will work? Oh, Abraham. Don't deceive yourself. Oh. And Abraham will just say, look, yes, this is what the body Say, have you ever seen any old man like that giving, yeah, uh, 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 doing that before? And you look around your, uh, all the old men say, no. <laughs> so he will be attacking your faith with what is around you, with what you see, with what you feel. It's, he he attacks your faith with the five senses. Make them reason. So you look around, you know, maybe Abraham just saw some, saw, saw somebody who is about 85 and come in. I said, Abraham, how are you? I said, Abraham, Abraham asked, oh, how are you? I said, this side is gone, no, it's gone, it's gone, it can't work again. <laughs> so even 85, I call, now 90, <laughs> now going to 100. So it discourages you. Sometimes while you're trying to build faith, you see things, similar things around that are impossible. And all is for devil to use it to attack your faith. I hope you're getting me. Did Abraham believe God? Oh, let me continue. Oh, my God. This scripture, I like it all. He not considered but already dead since he was about a hundred years old. And the deadness of Sarah's room, then he looked at Sarah's room and you know, the brain and the mind will tell you. Sarah then will look very old. You see, especially when the faith comes, you look at the face. Hey! Is that the lady who <laughs> said she's going to give birth? <laughs> because Sarah was approaching uh, 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 90, 90 years. Say, hey, is this one? They say she's going to give birth. Ah. They say that will say, ah. even at 35, even 27, she couldn't give birth. Then say, oh, no, say, Abraham, look at Sarah's womb, Sarah's womb. When did she get to her menopause? Calculate. 45 years ago. Hey, my way. <laughs> so, it looks impossible. Will she even produce eggs? 
Can, even if she gets pregnant, will she have strength to carry it? Even from tech is something the doctor says that is high risk. 40, they say is high risk. 50, high risk. Yeah, what about 90? <laughs> ah! That time, no surgical, uh, uh, no, 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 they cannot cut you, do cesarean there. Either you give birth naturally or you die with a child. Getting to 90 years, you know if this lady even get pregnant, she will die with the baby. But the brain, the mind, the devil will be throwing dark things in the mind and in the brain and left it. Hey, they can happen. But Abraham was growing stronger. God is the one who has promised. He knows he can perform it. I don't know how he's going to do it, but it will happen. I don't know what he's going to do, it, but he's going, it will happen. I don't know how it will happen. I don't know how, but it will happen. The Bible says, oh, verse 20. Is it verse 20? He did not waver at the promise. He did not stagger at the promise. Sometimes the devil comes to hit us to get ourselves this in faith. Look at the promise. Your focus should be on the promise. When God promised you, look, some will come, but still focus on it. Peter had a word, a promise, you know that. When the storm came, what he was afraid of. Before they realized, they saw another person coming, walking, the storm they were afraid of. Somebody was walking on what they were afraid of. Now their fear turned. No faith can move. It moved from the storm to the ghost. The problem of the storm was still there. But when a bigger faith, fear comes, <laughs> you forget about the, the smaller one. <laughs> Uh, they know they are fishermen. Is it likely they could uh, do something about the sea, uh, the water? But the ghosts, they don't have antidote for that. They, have, they are not used to what, that, that ghost. And here is a ghost. Not only a ghost, but the ghost walking on water. And where is the ghost going? Coming towards <laughs> two trouble <laughs> one God <laughs> so they turn something that, no, something that does not happen you turn from what you think is possible you can solve to the one you think you can solve cry and Jesus said it is I Peter said mm. if it's you let me come. I want to be sure. Then a promise came. And that promise that Jesus, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. Then Jesus spoke his word and said, Come. When God speaks and you obey the word, it becomes the basis of your faith. He did not just jump on the water, but God spoke. Faith coming by hearing, and hearing the word of God. So Jesus spoke, God spoke, come, and he just jumped. When he jumped on it, his focus was on Jesus. When you are moving in faith, your focus should be on the word, on the one who spoke the word. If you move your eyes off from the one who spoke the word, you will sink. The storm hadn't stopped. It was still the same. But a word had come. He said, come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to, G to Jesus. Wow. Wow. Let's look at how he did it. Wow. But when he did, he did what? 
he saw that the wind was boisterous. He was afraid. Instead of faith, fear took over. And beginning to sing, he cried out, saying, Lord, save me. How did he see that the wind, the sea was boisterous? Because he looked at the sea. He moved his focus from Jesus, from the one that said, come, and looked at the trouble. And anytime you look at the trouble, your faith <laughs> will be challenged. Your faith will be attacked. Looking at the trouble or the problem will challenge your faith and will try to sink your, your faith. So all the time, keep looking at the word. Remind yourself about what God said. Keep it before your eyes. Think about it. Meditate upon it. Walk towards it. Focus on that word. Other things will come to move your eyes off. Keep your eyes on it. You will get to that place. But he started sinking. And when he started sinking, that is where prayer can ravage me. And thank God, when even our faith tries to fail, he is there to lift you. But it's better for your faith to stand. Amen. Amen. Tell somebody, let your faith stand. I have prayed for you. What we need, the very prayer we need very well for people, for, for, pray for people that their faith will stand. When people are going through trouble and storms, sometimes advice, don't solve it. When you are in trouble, all the everything, you see, your mind <laughs> is attacked by many, many things. All the advice, it's easy to advise. How many know that? Oh, Farmer Nyame, yes. <laughs> Farmer Nyame. Give it to God. Like I saw that I heard about a pastor. When people lose their, they say, say Farmer Nyame, Farmer Nyame, and that is his advice. Oh, yes, Farmer Nyame. On a dimmer, on a far. He's the one who gives. He's the one that takes. Give it to God. Give it to God. He gives and he takes. Then one day it happened to him. The pastor started crying. He said, and one of the congregation said, Ah, pastor, give it to God. He said, This one, they haven't given it. <laughs> Lord, this one, I haven't given to you to bring my child back to me. <laughs> if it's somebody's, it's very easy. Yeah. Give it to God. If it is yours, you say, God, this one, I haven't made agreement with you. What I'm saying is very easy to advise. But most of when the person is in trouble, the advice don't do anything. It is his faith. That can make him stand. Amen. 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 Today, I want you to pray for five minutes concerning your faith. Your faith will be strong in God, in the word of God. That your faith, you might look like you are a failure today, but let your faith stand. Things may not be working for you, but hold on to your faith. What God has promised you, he will also perform it. What he has said, I want each one to pray and pray for another person that his faith will stand. Pray that his faith will stand.
It happened to many people that they went through. Pray that their faith will stand. Pray that faith will stand. Many are fighting. A fight, the fight of faith. And the Lord help us. Pray that your faith will stand. It is faith that saved Noah. It is faith that Abraham, even though it's past age, and it is faith that Sarah herself, who was barren, was, in, was enabled to become a mother. It is faith that made Abraham act and obey and give Isaac as a sacrifice, knowing that God is able to raise him from the dead. It is faith that Isaac blessed Esau in regard to their future. Esau did not, was the firstborn, but Isaac blessed Isaac, uh, Jacob. Jacob rose up and became great. It is faith that I, Jacob blessed the sons of Joseph when they crossed his hands. His, Joseph said, it's a mistake. The elder one is on your right, and this one is on his own. It's a mistake. He said, no, I know what I'm doing. Faith, even though you can be blind, but can see. It is by faith that the children of Israel cross the Red Sea. As sure as faith gets strengthened, no matter what stops you, there will be a way for you to pass through. Pray that your faith will be strong. Pray. Pray. It is faith that make Moses refuse to be called the son of Pharaoh. Even though at that particular time it's more comfortable to be Pharaoh's son. Because to be the prince of Egypt was more glorious than to become the king of Israel at that time. But he refused because faith sees ahead and faith sees the end. He knows that there's a great nation that is going to be born and he will choose to suffer so that at the end he can enjoy. I wanted to pray by faith Those Hebrew boys refused to bow. And by faith, the fire could not destroy them. Even though naturally, fire destroy bodies. What kills other people shouldn't be able to kill you by faith. Because you obeyed God. By faith, the Lord will lift you and make you great. Amen. By faith, Isaac sold. When everything looks gloomy, he sold at that particular time. And by faith, 
his fortune turned within a year. By faith, he entered as a weak man, but left the city as the strongest person. Today, you might be weak, but you'll be very strong very soon. By faith, people receive their children from the dead. Maybe your son is lost. He might be alive, but dead in Christ, and you are crying for your child. By faith, that child will find God. Today, faith should be activated. No matter what you go through this week, may your faith stand. I pray for everyone's faith, for the faith of the members of this church and those hearing me. The Lord, no matter what the devil throws against their life, I know, oh God, I pray for their faith. Their faith will stand. They will overcome. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hallelujah. So, what did you hear? What? Great. So tell somebody the devil cannot destroy your faith. Because I have also prayed for you. So when you go home, pray for that person that you are speaking to. <laughs> Amen. 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 We are going to make it. 